Hi, I'm Brad Fletcher. I'm a structural engineer with Atlas Tube, and today we're continuing on with our, our video series on designing with hollow structural sections. And today we're going to talk about connections. But first, let's kind of review and talk about what hollow structural sections are. Now, tube-like structures are a naturally occurring size and shape. You, between bones of animals or stems of flowers or bamboo, you can see that nature has come up with really much as a perfect size and shape for carrying structural loads. Now, what we're talking about today is we're talking about the steel sections, uh, cold form welded tube, which are used for bolted and welded construction. And these come in square, round, and rectangular sizes. Now, why are HSS used? Well, the main reason is for aesthetics. They're nice to look at. As you can see, there are many nice structures that have been built out of uh, tubes and hollow structural sections, and that's the main reason. But there's other reasons, such as they're economical. They are efficient in resisting torsion. Uh, they have great compressive strength. They have less surface area and can have less weight in certain applications. They also come in a wide range of sizes. The Atlas tube size uh, range is from 1 inch up to 22 inch, and we can go up to 7 8 inch wall. They're also, as I mentioned, they, they come in square, rectangular, and round sizes, but they do even also come in elliptical sections. Now, other reasons, other advantages that HSS have is they're easy to handle. A lot of fabricators like to have them in their shop because they're, they lay down flat. Uh, they're easy to jig. Uh, they also have lower finishing costs. Because of the lower surface area, fireproofing and painting costs can be lower. Uh, they have excellent torsion resistance. The torsional constant of a closed section is 200 times greater than that of an open section, which gives it its torsional strength. Uh, the Rx and Ry factor uh, are the, um, significantly higher than an open section, and therefore it gives you a greater unbraced length. Uh, also robust structures and, and structures that require some blast resistance. If you use square and round HSS, because of the, their ability to resist loads in, from any direction, those non-directional loads, such as seismic or blast, are, are easy to resist. Now, where HSS are used are mainly in columns and bracing. You also see them in trusses. But there's also a horizontal applications, such as curved beams, where there's a lot of torsion, uh, floor framing with modular construction, exposed uh, structures, as well as robust structures. So now let's talk a little bit about connections. Well, the challenges we face with connections when it comes to hollow structural sections is, you know, people say they're too hard. They're too expensive. Maybe there's not enough resources out there. I don't know uh, where to go to to learn about hollow structural sections connections. And a lot of times, the engineer of record doesn't actually do the design for the connections. So therefore, they don't give much thought to the connections during the design process. Talking about the different types of connections that we're going to be talking about in this video series, the first ones, tension and compression, uh, these are your bracing connections for diagonal bracing, uh, for braced frames, or your splices when you're splicing two hollow structural sections together. The next type are uh, connections that involve line loads or concentrated loads. These are your shear connections or your connections that uh, take in uh, account for the line loads uh, and directly connected to hollow structural columns. MoMA connections, uh, these are probably the more, some of the more challenging connections. And the, here we're talking about wide flange to HSS uh, columns. And there's different types of uh, connections that can be used for this. Uh, and we're going to explore those in, the, in this video series as well. Truss connections, or HSS truss connections. Uh, these are generally, when you design the truss, with, to have tension and compression in your web members. Uh, that's the next type of welded connections that we're going to be talking about. And then there's HSS to moment connections. Uh, these are areas where there isn't a lot of uh, research done, but that is changing. There is research that's being done on directly welded HSS to HSS connections, as well as mechanically fastened uh, connections. Now let's talk a little bit about the resources. Uh, up until about 10, 15 years ago, there really weren't a lot of resources out there for us to dig into as engineers. But in 2005 and 2010, AISC 360, the Chapter K came into uh, effect. So Chapter K now is a great resource for engineers when it comes to uh, HSS connections. Uh, Design Guide 24 uh, from AISC is based on Chapter K. It is an excellent resource on understanding how Chapter K works and all the requirements behind it. The CISC, the Canadian Institute of Steel Construction, published a design guide in 1997, which was written by Professor Jeff Packer. And that's an excellent resource on HSS connections as well. Uh, it's a little outdated as far as some of the specifications out there right now, but it still is an excellent uh, engineering guide for connections. 
Now the SIDEC design guides, these green books here, which are available for download off of the AISC website, uh, they're an excellent resource, but they're very Eurocentric. They're based on the Euro codes uh, in, in Europe. And they're, but they're still a good engineering resource. Uh, sometimes you have to dig through the differences with, between the Euro code and the American and, and Canadian codes, but they're based on some excellent information. And then, of course, there's the Atlas website. Uh, I encourage you to visit our website on a regular basis as we continue to update it and have it become a good resource for you in the connection and hollow structural section world. So let's talk a little bit about where these resources get their information. Well, there's the International Institute of Welding, the IIW, which has been uh, providing recommendations for the design of static strength of tubular joints for a long time. Uh, all the way back to 1981 was when they put their first edition out. And they've since put out editions in 89 and in 2009. Now, uh, those re recommendations were taken on by SIDEC, which is an international committee for the development and study of tubular structures, which is based, uh, it's a collection of manufacturers of HSS and pipe, uh, mainly based in Europe, but Atlas Tube is the North American representative on that committee. And they have, as I said, those green books we talked about, uh, they are, uh, a great resource for uh, connection design and the first set of design guides was based on the requirements of 1989. Uh, they're now going through the process of updating it for, uh, for their second edition for the requirements that came out in 2009. Now why this is important, if you look at all the design codes out there that most engineers are going to run into, whether it be the Euro code, or the AISC code, or the CISC code, as well as the SIDIC design guides, they're all based on the recommendations of the IIW 1989. And while there's always going to be differences between the Euro code and, and the American codes and the Canadian codes uh, based on regional influences or format issues, at the end of the day, the designs you get from the, these different codes are all going to be very comparable. So in summary, why it, understanding HSS connections is important it's because the strength of HSS, the local strength of HSS, has a very integral part into the connection design. And what I mean by local strength is your, your uh, sidewall yielding, your cord wall plastification, the flexibility of the, the, the face of the HSS when it comes to connections. Those are all limit states that you need to understand uh, during your member selection. And what I mean by that is that the engineer of record needs to be thinking about these things when they're sizing their members for their main members before they even get to the connections. Because if they don't think about these things and they always choose the most efficient section, whether it be the lightest, least weight section, you may run into problems with your connections down the road. Uh, you may have to, your fabricator who's doing the design for the connections may have to end up reinforcing connections. And reinforcing generally is not an acceptable option, whether it be uh, the fact that they're difficult and expensive, but also aesthetically, your architect doesn't want a bunch of reinforcing plates all over his uh, tubes. So now, even though the EOR may not be doing the final connection, it's important that they do some checks throughout the process so that they uh, choose the right member design. And then once again, it's important to pass along real, uh, good information for your connections to the party who is responsible for the connections, whether it be your fabricator or a third party engineer. Uh, good load information such as the proper loads, the combinations that are to be used, as well as transfer forces. Those are all really important issues. So that's a quick overview on uh, what we're going to be talking about during our video series on connections. I uh, appreciate you watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me.